All right, it's storytelling time. Here we go. Today we're going to talk about storytelling behind the drum set. Why tell a story? It's not the most important thing that we do, or is it? I can say this about storytelling with your instrument. Your performance will have more meaning and more impact. Telling a story behind your instrument can mean a lot of different things. You can take it literally and actually play a story that you concoct in your mind. Johnny ran down the street to visit his friend, and then a storm came in, so he ran inside the house. They played for a while, then they came back outside, so on and so on, and you're actually playing all of these different actions. Another way of telling a story is just to capture a mood or a feeling. So it's not a very specific storyline, but you're capturing something that can be perceived as something within a story. Today I'm going to demonstrate three different exercises that you can do at home that will improve your ability to tell a story. I do recommend that you practice this at the beginning of your practice, in the middle, and at the end of your practice. Number one, a free flow solo. In this example, I want you to just sit behind your instrument and play what comes. Most of the time, I do this without warming up as well. I use this as a warm up. Feel free to change tempos, change dynamics, change the way you play your instrument. You will notice that on the setup that I use for these demonstrations, I have a, an atypical setup that is actually hard for me to work with because I have to start thinking a little bit outside of the box. The second approach, this one's a fun one because it's all about limitations. Sit behind your drum set and tell yourself, I am only going to use this instrument, this instrument, this instrument. It could be one instrument, it can be five instruments, depending on how many you have in front of you. But you're limiting yourself to only a certain set of instruments. This is fun because it allows you to explore all the different sounds that you can get from an instrument. There's a famous teacher, Jamie Haddad, who when he gives a lesson, the first thing he has the student do is sit down and play the ride cymbal for an hour or for however long the lesson is. The idea there is to make the student be aware of how they're making that particular instrument feel and also for them to explore all the different sounds that they can get out of that instrument. Placing limitations on what you're allowing yourself to do is not something that's foreign to musicians. Composers use this all the time. 
For instance, when I'm brainstorming ideas for pieces to write, often I will say to myself, okay, maybe I only want to use this rhythm, or maybe I want to use this set of notes, and let's see how creative I can get with that. The third approach is to establish a rhythmic motif. A rhythmic motif is a pattern that comes back throughout your story. It can be repeated, it can be elongated, you can speed it up, you can slow it down, you can reverse it, you can orchestrate it differently around your drum set. Your motif can be really simple, it also can be really complicated. It can be one or two notes. Da da, da da. Setup. It can be more complicated, something that stretches uh, across a four measure phrase. Playing a rhythmic motif doesn't mean that you only have to play that rhythm. It's just an idea that comes back here and there. It's something that glues together your ideas. In the demonstration that I'll show you in a second, you'll notice that I established the rhythm fairly soon. It's da 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 da. And that can be triplets, triplet hit, triplet hit. It could be yaka da da, yaka da da, yaka da. So you can you can feel it different. It just all depends on the context. At the end of this, you can combine all three. When you're free flowing, in the middle of that, or in the beginning, wherever you come across an idea that you like, it's a motif. Go for it. Exhaust it. And then all of a sudden, you say to yourself, Oh, let me just try to play the ride cymbal and the bass drum. Let's see what I can do with those two. And you can use the motif, and you can also just wing it.
Telling a story behind a drum set can be an uncomfortable thing to ask yourself to do, especially when you've never done it before. When I have students do this for the first time, they often stop mid-story because they say they ran out of ideas or they didn't know what was going on, they get lost. Often it comes down to their personal rhythmic vocabulary. So as you become stronger as a player and learn more, your ideas are going to be translated better. Please don't worry about being super accurate on these uh, stories. This is about an expression and it's not really designed to be perfect. Have a great day everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe below. Over here, over here. Subscribe. Here's a true story about a performance I had a few years ago. Right before we were going to go on, I had heard that a friend of mine had passed away, an older fellow. And I didn't really have time to grieve too much in that moment. But there came a time during the performance when I have or had an extended solo. And I always dreaded this a little bit because while I had ideas, I never felt really comfortable with how I was playing. So this particular night, right before I started, I said, I'm going to not only dedicate this to this person, but I'm also just going to think about them and think about you know, the visual history that I have in my mind of all the things that we had done together. And what transpired was amazing, exhausting, exhilarating, uh, fantastic. It, it was so beautiful from my perspective that when I was finished, I kind of almost collapsed because I was just so like, oh, it's like you're just giving it all, your all. And the audience went crazy. And one, I don't take a lot of drum solos. It's not really something that I consider myself really strong at. And so when this happened, I was both happy but also amazed because of the fact that they didn't know what I was, what I was doing. They didn't know what I was going through. They didn't know what I was feeling in that moment. But somehow they did. And it was in that moment that I realized that telling a story or having some sort of visual or like I was talking about before, a mood to go with your solo, you know, it's the only way to approach this. It's the only way to approach this. And it's the only way that actually like, it's really the only way to communicate that with, you know, regular people.